Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over how to distract an enemy AI by using sounds. So in this example I'm going to be throwing a rock, where that rock hits it will play a sound, the enemy will go to that sound location, investigate it and then carry on with its path or whatever it's doing beforehand once it's investigated it. So you can use this in any way you like, it doesn't have to be throwing a rock, it could just be simply dropping something, walking into something, any sound effect you want we can do it like this. So let me hit play and I'll show you what we're going to make today. So you see the AI is just randomly roaming and if I press G we're going to throw a rock. The AI is going to run to where the rock landed. A second later it's just going to continue with what it was doing beforehand. If I throw another rock it's going to go over there. If I throw another one it's going to go over here. So you can see it just goes straight to where the noise played, where the sound effect was. So we can just distract the enemy AI like that. And a good example of this is in Assassin's Creed. You might be trying to sneak past some guards and you throw a rock or something to distract the AI so it runs away so you can sneak past. So this is what we're going to make today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import our sound effect. So I'm going to be using this one here, which is just a simple rock collision sound effect. But again, you can use whatever you like. And I'll leave a link in the description down below to where you can get this sound effect. And so what we want to do next is simply right click on our sound effect and create Q. I'm going to name this one Rock Audio Q, like so. And let's open that up straight away. And all we're going to do is scroll down until we find Override Attenuation, and we're going to tick that there, like so. Save and close that, and that just means that it has location based sound on it as well. So if it's to the left of us, we'll hear it to the left. If it's to the right, we'll hear it to the right, and so on and so forth. And after that, all we want to do is actually create our Rock Blueprint. So for that, I'm going to right click go to blueprint class and get an actor and I'm going to name this one rock distraction BP. You can just name this rock BP however I do already have one named that so I'm just giving it a different name and then you can open it up straight away. In here we want to add a component and add a sphere collision like so and we're going to drag that onto the default scene root to make that the new scene root. Then we're going to add another component this one being a static mesh I'm going to name this one rock or rock SM for static mesh, like so. And we can change the static mesh to be the start content rock, which we have by default. And then obviously scale that down as well. I think I'm going to put it to be 0.2 on the X, Y, and Z. And then just move it down to be in place as well. So I think that's going to be good. So now we've got the basic part of our rock visually set up here. So what we want to do next is set up actually playing a sound effect when this rock hits the ground or when it hits anything we want really. So we're going to go off the event graph here, delete event begin play, begin overlap and event tick. And what we're going to do instead is right click and get event hit, like so. And what we're going to do here is we just want to play the sound effect when it hits something. So with the system I'm making today and throwing the rock, sometimes it might actually collide with the player and we don't want the rock to play the sound effect when it collides with the player. So to do that, we're going to come out the other here and just get an exclamation point equals, so it is not equal to and the bottom object we're going to have as get player character. So if whatever we collide with is not equal to our player, so it isn't the player, then we'll put a sound effect. So we'll hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the condition in there, and the execution into event hit, so that way we can check to see if it is the character or not. So we only want to come out true, because obviously if it isn't equal to that, then that's perfect. So out of true, we also want to hold down O, left click to get a do once, and the reason I'm doing this is because the rock is going to roll on the ground after I throw it. Which, so I don't want it to just play the sound effect every time it rolls, because that will be quite painful on our ears and won't sound good either. I just want to play it once when it first hits the ground. So I don't need to go into reset either. And now completed, what I want to do is play sound at location. With the sound being the sound key we just set up, which I named mine Rock Audio Q, and the location being Get Actor Location there. So it's going to play the sound effect wherever the rock currently is when it lands. So we can also use the hit location off of the event hit, but I'm just going to do get actual location instead. And then after this, what we want to do is the, this is the important part, is we want to report noise event, like so, with the noise location as get actual location. So what we're doing here is actually allowing the AI to know that we had a noise here, with the location being this get actual location here. So it doesn't actually use the play sound location at all, that's just for the player to know. What the AI uses is report noise event. 
the loudness will keep as one the instigator is who triggered the event so i'm going to go into the get player character there so that's who started it so essentially who threw the rock so as you see there actually that triggered the noise max range i'm going to leave as zero which means there's no limit however you can up this if you want so let's say 500 which means there's a range of 500 for where this noise can be heard which to be fair you'll probably want as well instead because obviously it's a rock you don't want every ai to hear it so i'll put it as 150 for example tag we can leave as none however if you want to get into the specifics of it you can put it as noise or rock noise anything like that but i'm not going to go into those details of using tags today so now we compile and save that and that should be the rock setup however i'm not going to close it i'll just minimize it in case we need to come back to it what we're going to do next is open up our character blueprint because we now want to set up throwing the rock so to do that i'm going to go to content third person bp blueprints and third person character and what we're going to do is just find some empty space down here and I'm going to get an action mapping. So I'm going to go to edit, project settings. Once it loads, I'm going to go down to input down here on the left and create an action mapping. You see I already have one. I've named it throw object and I've changed the key to be G. So whenever I press G, we're going to throw something. You can set that to be absolutely whatever you want. And again, it's very simple to do. So you just hit the plus action mapping, give it your name and change it to be the keyboard event that you'd like. So once you've done that, we can close it and then right click and search whatever you named it. So I named mine throw object. You see we have input action throw object there. With this system, I'm not going to go into too much of the details of actually fully throwing something. So for example, how many we have, anything like that. I'm just doing the basic system. And I do have a video more in depth of actually throwing rocks with the limited amount. So you only have say five and you can pick more up, stuff like that. So I do have videos where I do go over those, which I'll link on the screen now. So out of press, what we want to do is we want to spawn actor from class with the class being the rock we just made. So I named mine rock distraction BP there. The spawn transform, we want to right click and split the structure pin, not move this out a bit. And the location, we want to be just in front of the player. So the way I've did this before is in the viewport, I have this sphere here as a reference. So I'm gonna use that again. So I'm just gonna delete that and I'm going to add a component, I'm going to add a sphere, and I'm just going to move this to be just in front of the player, making it a bit smaller like so as well. And this is essentially again where you want it to spawn from. So I want to throw the rock from there. I'm going to set the visibility to be hidden, so not visible. Or I'll just tick hidden in game actually, so we can still see it here. And then I'm going to set the collision to have no collision. So this isn't here for the player, it's simply just a reference for us to use. So I'm going to compile and save that. And again, there are many different ways of doing this. But this is just a simple way I'm going with. So let's go over to the event graph. We're going to get that sphere or object reference, whatever you want to name it. So I'll rename it rock ref. And then out of this, I'm going to get world location like so. And that will go straight into the spawn transform location there as we want to spawn it just in front of the player where we have that like so. And the rotation, we just want to simply get the rotation of the actor. So we're going to get actor rotation like so. And that way it's just going to make sure that it does always spawn in front of the player with the correct rotation as well. And the scale I'm going to leave as one. Everything else we can leave the same on there. And what it's going to do at the moment is just spawn it in. We want to spawn it throwing it. So with some speed behind it. So at the return value, we're going to get the sphere. So if we scroll down, we can get sphere there, which is just the sphere collision here inside of our rock BP that we made earlier. And that's because again, we want to add force to it. So what we're gonna do is out of this, we're going to set physics linear velocity there, connecting that into the execution of the spawn actor. Target will obviously be the sphere. The new velocity, we want to set up in a second and everything else will look the same. So add to current, bow name, leave as they are. Out of the return value of the spawn actor, once again, we want to get actor location. Just above that, we're going to right click and get actor location again. So we get in the location of both the player and the rock when we've just spawned it in. And out of the get actor location for the player, we're going to get unit direction vector with from being the player's location to being the rock's location. And the return value, we're going to multiply. So we get a float vector multiplied by a float, connecting that into the new velocity there. I'm going to set the float to be a value of a thousand. 
And so what this is doing is it's simply just going to get a forward facing direction pretty much for where we want to throw the rock, timesing it by a thousand to add some speed to it, and actually setting that to be the linear velocity for our rock as well, so it simulates us throwing it. So this is the basic system for how we're going to throw a rock. So we compile and save that. What we can actually do as well is hit play to test this out. And now if we hit G, you see it spawned in the rock, however it didn't move. And you see they are spawning in though. So what I want to do now is see why that's not working and why it's not moving. And a very simple reason for this is because we didn't simulate physics. So back in our rock BP here, we want to select the sphere and just tick simulate physics there. Then what we also want to do is change the collision presets to be block all, not overlap all dynamic. Now if we test this out one final time, this should work. So as you can see, we can now throw the rock and it will go forwards like that. You can see it rolls at the end as well. However, you may have also heard we didn't actually hear anything. And again, we just want to make sure that inside of the rock BP here, we tick simulation generates hit events. So we can actually use the event hit here. So now if we press G, we can throw the rock and we get the sound effect as well. As you can see when it's rolling, we don't get it. So now we have throwing the rock with the sound effect like so. So now let's move on to the easier part in context, which is obviously have an AI actually hear this and go investigate it. So like I say, this part's a bit easier. It's very simple. What we want to do is open up our AI, which I already have one, which I just named AI Rock Noise. And the reason I already have one is because I've got the random roam set up in here like so. If you don't have one, what you can do is just duplicate the character blueprint and then use that as your AI or well, you can watch some of my previous tutorials on setting up AIs. So in here, what we want to do is we want to add a component and we want to add AI perception. In here, we want to add an array element for sensors config, changing it to AI hearing config, like so. We're going to open that up by pressing the little drop down arrow there. And all we're going to do is make sure that we tick all three of these, so detect enemies, neutrals, and friendlies. Everything else, we can keep the same. Obviously, you can increase the hearing range if you'd like, but you don't need to. Also, make sure that you do have pawn sensing as well with everything left default, so hear noises is ticked. And that is going to detect it because in our rock BP, we had report noise event, which means this will then hear that. So what we're going to do is with the AI perception selected, in the bottom right, we can get on target perception updated event there. Just hit the plus arrow next to it. And out of the actor here, so the actor object reference, we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character, like so. Out of the stimulus, we're going to break AI stimulus, and that's because we want to access, so we open that up, access the successfully sensed there. Because we don't want to fire off the rest of this code if it hasn't sensed anything, only if it has. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that to the cast, the condition being successfully sensed there, like so. Off of true, we want to create a new boolean, so I'm going to hit the plus variable here, naming this investigating question mark like so or moving or anything on those lines and I'm going to set that to be true off of the true of the branch there. After this I'm going to get an AI move to with the pawn being get a reference to self. Destination is going to be open up the break AI stimulus again. Destination is stimulus location because wherever the noise was that's where we want it to go and that'll be the stimulus location. And this will also work for chasing as well, so it will just go to wherever it saw it. Everything else we're going to leave the same, and then on success, I'm going to hold on D, left click to get a delay. I'm going to set that to be one second. You can have it as whatever you like, but this just means as soon as it gets there, it will stay for one second and then move on. And now I've completed, I'm going to call my event of random roam, so it continues randomly roaming, or for you it could be roam, patrol, anything like that. But again, I just wanted to stay there for a second before continuing. And again, I have videos where I've set up this random roam. What I'm going to do is on my random roam, I'm going to move that out to where I have the loop. I'm going to hold down B, a left click to get a branch. This is where I'm using the is investigating boolean we just made. And off of false is where I want to go back into random roam there, like so. And now this will work perfectly. So again, this is what I mean by this part is much more simple. All we're doing is we're simply seeing if it heard it. If it did, it's going to go to where it heard it from, which is all using this code here. So we compile, save, and hit play to test this out, and this should work good for us. So if we hit G, we can throw the rock with the sound effect, and it went to where it landed. If I do it again, it landed over there, and it walked over to where it heard it. Do it again, it's gonna go over to where it hears the sound effect, like so. 
So again, if it doesn't do it perfectly, what you might need to do is in the rock distraction BP here, is just increase the maximum range. I'm gonna set it to zero for now, just so it doesn't have a range just for testing. However, just keep increasing this until you get it to the perfect radius for you. So let's test this out again. If I hit G, it's gonna hear it and go over. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. If we've done everything we want to do, we set up a system in which we can throw a rock or anything you want. It will make a noise. The AI will hear that noise and go investigate it, wait there for a couple of seconds and then continue with, with what it was doing before. So we can use this to distract AIs. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.